Yeah. Okay, today okay. we're going to tie a sink hammer. What we need is, uh, I use uh, Camasan B175 size 14. I need Shag It Up, uh, distributed by Orvis. And due to the fact that I'm tying the body out of a stripped quill, in this case I need in this case I need uh, a stripped quill supplied by Venyard. Okay, first of all, we set up a thread. I use, uh, use a thread, a thread uh, in this case a 70 from Wapsi. Uh, it doesn't matter what what side of a kind of thread you're using, as long as you can split it, that's uh, important. So we set up the thread uh, from the hook shanks and uh, we just lay a base of thread on the hook shanks all the way into the bend. Okay. We make uh, a tail out of a few barbs of a Chinese hen hackle. Okay. Like so. And we bring the thread all the way back up to the hook eye. Okay. Come forward, uh, backwards. You take a 12 pound mono, just like that, and you tie it on top of the hook shank. Yeah, you just pull it because the only thing or the only reason why you need this mono is to tie up a bead on top of the hook shank. You have to level it a little bit and that you go that's why you go back and forward a few times to level out the body. Make sure you have enough room in front of the mono to make a beautiful head and so on. Okay. I'm on the rear of uh, the hook shank. I'll take a quilt, a hand or a manual stripped quilt, and I'll tie it in all the way up here. And you come with your line or your thread forward. Okay, so far so good, we only need that piece of mono, okay, the next thing what we're going to do is secure a bead onto the mono. Make a couple of windings in front of the mono. So the mono is on top of uh, the hook. Okay, put that away. Now we're going to use a lighter. And just to make sure it's 100% secured, just take a tiny little drop of uh, lacquer. Okay. Take your 
are going to wind the quilt touch and turns slightly overlapping to make the body you know quilt is uh, very fragile so therefore I'm going to finish it and let it dry but I'm going to finish it with a bit of lacquer so what I'll do is I'll tie it off temporarily so I can put uh, lacquer on top of it let it dry for uh, a couple of uh, seconds. While you're waiting uh, the lacquer to be drying, you can already prepare the rubbery hackle. Therefore, you need the shaggy up and the petit jean tool. Okay, in my hand I have uh, a little bit of uh, the shaggy up. What I'll do is I'll take them one by one and put them on the petit jean tool. And depending the fly, I add more or less of these rubbery legs. In this case I think uh, it's more than enough to have uh, seven, seven legs on the Petit Jean tool. So I have four at the moment. Number five is on his way. Five, six, they don't have to be level at all. Okay, you take uh, that piece of mono and you push the legs through the petit jean tool, just like that and pull the mono back out. Okay, it looks like this. You take the other piece and you grab the rubbery legs with this piece and opens the other. As you can see you have loops here which you are going to cut through. Just like that. With a clamp you just take this and you open that one. You do this because you want to level the legs more or less as of from now. You can always adjust it when they're on the fly. That's another loop. Okay. So these are your lower legs. You grab it back. Just like this. Put it aside and put the line back on your hook. Okay. You can take a pinch of dubbing, not too much, but just to add a little bit of a thorax. One, two. A few turns in front of the hook. Okay. Now you have to split the thread so and that's why you need actually a flat thread to make sure you can split the thread you can also work with a, a dubbing loop but it makes your fly more more and more uh, bulkier it's not always uh, easy to do that 
voila line is split now you take your petition tool and you put it in between the splitted thread hop and you let it slide down on the legs important is that you keep the tension on the thread and then you can open it keep the tension on the line and then spin the bobbin doesn't matter whether there is one or two legs falling out make sure because we have plenty of legs left just like so okay now you have uh, the rubber legs on the line and the thing what you have to do now is just wind the rubber legs around the bead not around the hook shank but around the bead and you start on the bottom of it and you go up you continue as long as the legs are still and here you are all the legs are now on the 12 mono 12 pound mono now you have to tie it off very neatly um, on the hook shank so you grab the legs you go underneath it a couple of turns you take your whip finish and you make your nut The advantage of this fly is that the hook will be upside down in the water and the chances to get snagged in, uh, on a rock or on the weed are uh, a bit less. You, as you can see the legs are still a bit too long so in that case you can adjust them by just snipping them off just like that. Uh, a long leg here and that's how uh, a sink hammer looks like